Blizzard of 93 slams into the tri-state area. This is Channel 2 News Saturday. Good evening, everyone. The blizzard of 93 continues to head north, but our problems are far from over. Well, that's for sure. It has been a full day of battering in our area, but there is more to come. This storm has now reached northern New England, continuing a long and a deadly journey from Florida all the way up the east coast. There are estimates of more than 30 dead, including two in upstate New York. And it was not a day to be on the roads. Dozens of drivers were stranded by heavy snows in our area. Where the snow plows couldn't keep up, the tow trucks were called out. And also, three local airports were shut down very early today, and thousands of passengers have been stranded for the night while they wait for the airports to reopen, and that may happen sometime tomorrow morning. Rough going, Michelle. You bet. High tide is just around the corner, and this storm is not over yet. Let's get the very latest now from Frank Field and Craig Allen in the Channel 2 Weather Center. Gentlemen. Well, a big question has been why the sudden calm, and it, it, it almost seems to be an enlarged eye of a storm. A hurricane has a calm at the center. This almost seems to be a duplication of that because it's a huge sprawling system. Right. Rather than a pinpoint area, it's a larger area right now, which is covering just about all of the metropolitan area. So let's take a look at one of the charts that we prepared for you. Now, there we have the storm now, Craig, and it's where? It's sitting right around the Trenton area of New Jersey, and it's moving north, northeast. We'll probably pass over the city within the next hour or two, I would say, it's moving at about 35, 40 miles per hour. Okay, so why do we have blizzard warnings? Look at the next picture. As the low moves through, we sweep into that cold northerly flow around the other side, and that means exactly that, cold air sweeping in, changing everything over to snow. It would go back to snow during the night tonight, and we could pick up anywhere from two to four, maybe even five more inches with strong gusty winds, but out of the northwest, as Dr. Frank said. So with that being the case, those winds coming at us at about 50, 60 miles per hour, additional snowfall is likely and could cause uh, near zero visibility, and therefore the blizzard warning stays in effect from the weather service. And that, of course, would be through the early morning hours. And then as the storm moves away from us, we get into an improvement, but there'll still be some snow showers around and some brisk northerly winds. And of course, now the next problem are the tides, and we'll talk about that later on. Back to you. All right, thank you, Craig and Frank. Pat Battle is live now on the Jersey Shore in Highlands, where high tide is bringing some very high anxiety, and they're getting ready for the next wave, aren't they, Pat? Yes, Ernie, they are getting ready. They've been ready all day, but they are still mobilized here. Take a look at this Army National Guard truck. It was purchased by the borough a couple of weeks ago for this purpose. They usually have bad storms here. The mayor says when they come again, he wants to be ready. And behind that truck, there are a couple of fishing boats. They're prepared to go in and get out anybody that they're going to have to. Now, as you can see, the rain, it's light now. There's no wind, but there's a calm before the storm. And these people say they're not being lulled into a false sense of security tonight. The wind has died down, the tides are quiet, but this is just, as they say, the law before the storm. And what are you expecting after midnight? Some serious flooding, serious wind damage, and uh, additional people who may have to be evacuated. And as volunteer firefighters and first aid squad members in the Highlands stood by and waited for the second round of the storm tonight, more than 100 people, many of them children, prepared to wait it out at the nearby Henry Hudson Regional School, where they'd been evacuated earlier in the day. They could be here through Sunday. It's hectic because the kids can't sleep right and the kids can't play right. And it's hectic because you got to keep them in one spot, but I guess it's the best place to be to keep the kids, you know, so the kids are safe. And scenes like this were repeated in one coastal town after another today as residents of the beleaguered Jersey Shore retreated in the face of the great storm of 1993. My daughter from Pennsylvania, she called the police to tell us to come and get the, take us out. And you weren't going to go until that? No, happened? I wasn't going to go at all. Ed and Josephine Jackson were among the last Seabright residents pulled from their homes in the face of the storm that was pounding at their doorstep. They took temporary refuge at the borough firehouse to wait for the bus that would carry them to an evacuation center. How is the house today? Good. I got everything up. Some residents pulled out long before the wind-driven snow and ice arrived early this morning, but there are always those who want to weather a storm no matter how bad it gets. And it did get bad. So bad that just after 2 o'clock this afternoon, police took to the streets with megaphones announcing an imminent evacuation. President, the evacuation is imminent. If you need assistance, dial 842-0010. 
The wind tore the just repaired roof off the Tradewinds nightclub, left power lines dangling precariously above the streets and sent thousands running for cover. Ocean Avenue's business district was reminiscent of a ghost town. Most of the traffic, emergency vehicles rescuing the stranded. Well, we've been trained for this over the last four weekends we've been out. Since December 11th, we've been activated several times. Been out uh, to Seabright here. We've been down to uh, Belmar. Uh, just about the whole Jersey Shore we've been covering since Yes, it has been a very, very busy season for rescue workers and for all of these Jersey Shore towns who've been hit by one storm after another after another. Of course, the biggest, that big nor'easter that swept through here on December 11th, a lot of towns still haven't recovered from that. And you can believe that the representatives from this part of the Jersey Shore are going to be taking a close look at the action down along the shoreline tonight. This is U.S. Congressman Frank Poloni who's joining us now. You've taken a look at the damage, obviously damage on top of damage. Where do these folks stand now? Well, they're just hoping that uh, the wind doesn't pick up and the storm doesn't come in at great intensity because uh, if it does, we could have a real problem with the high tides at uh, 12 midnight until about 2 a.m. And we don't know what to expect at this point. It's just a watch and see kind of thing. Basically, I mean, now it's very calm, but I don't think that means anything because yeah. the storm may just come through. What, they learned something from the last time around, obviously. Senator, uh, excuse me, Congressman, I keep wanting to call you Senator because he's a former state senator here in New Jersey as well. But Congressman, I think that uh, we all recognize that those people are still bouncing back from the last storm, particularly the December 11th storm. A lot of that federal funding has not yet come through, although some individuals have got it. What about this time around? I mean, will there be more money forthcoming? How do you go and say, look, we need more, we need more? Yeah. Well, actually, FEMA has prepared in the event there's another disaster declaration and money would be available. The nice thing about this storm, though, uh, so far is that people were warned of it and therefore they've evacuated and they're prepared. Uh -huh. That was not the case uh, back in December, so uh -huh. hopefully that'll mean something. And the damage could be considerably less, hence less need to ask for more money. Oh. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. And that's it from here in, in uh, the Highlands. I'm Pat Battle reporting live from the battered Jersey Coast. Back to you in the studio. And I think we're going to... I'm sorry. We're going to I'm Mary sorry. Murphy. Thank you, Mark. We are going to Mary Murphy. I'm sorry. That's the second time for me today. It's been a long one. Let's go over to Mary. She's over in Brooklyn. Go ahead, Mary. Well, we're in Seagate, Pat, and I must tell you that the weather here took a miserable turn for the worse. In the last hour, we had to move our camera to slightly higher ground, about 30 feet back from the seawall behind me, because the camera and the truck were both just getting drenched by the pounding waves. And if we got too drenched, we wouldn't have brought you these pictures because the cables get soaked. Anyway, there is a real concern here now because, as I said, the waves are just pounding against the steel seawall, which is the sturdier of the two seawalls in this area. The other seawall is wooden, and that was pummeled very badly in the December nor'easter. I think you might be able to see if you push in, Ronnie, there's like a mini waterfall that's come over the steel seawall, and I, I'm told on one of the other streets that the water is flooding over the shoreline there, you know, over the wall. I know that the people here don't know what the next two hours will bring. The surf started its significant pounding again about 10 p.m., and Seagate police got ready to ask residents to evacuate voluntarily. This latest storm is especially painful for one woman on Atlantic Avenue. When it repeats itself, it's just like a wound reopened. For Francis Cohen, tonight's storm is like a bad case of deja vu. Exactly three months ago today, the Cohen family home collapsed on Beach 44th Street, weakened terribly by the pounding surf and winds of the December nor'easter. <laughs> The house's demise devastated 19-year-old Shoshana Cohen and her sister Rochelle, washing away the family's furniture, photos, religious articles, their father's medical books, their clothing destroyed by mud and salt water. I mean, I hate to say it, but we did feel to, uh, towards it as, as part, as almost as the love of a, of a member of the family. Like, like, like a little baby, our beautiful little white house. Every single thing we lost, and it's very, very hard to retrieve and to start again. The insurance is very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's three months. We still have not got the insurance money. About all they salvaged from 23 years of memories was the one house shingle with the address on it, now pasted to the wall of a relative's home around the block. Their back door was found somewhere in New Jersey. Yet tonight, Shoshana and her mother were ready to sit out this storm under the news clippings that speak of their last terrible encounter with the wind and surf. Only a like a block away from the ocean. We don't know what's going to happen. If the ocean just comes up over here, that's it. You know, we can't afford another house to go down. Aren't you worried about your lives? Because you're only a block away, as you mentioned. You're right. And 
like my mother was saying, you're worried about it's your just, safety? Of course, it's of course we are. It's just that it's very hard to leave something when you love it so much. Sea gators and visiting reporters experienced a variety of weather conditions all day. First heavy snow, then sleet and hail. The mail got delivered with some degree of difficulty, and some residents cooked up their food staples. The big question, how would the remaining steel seawall hold up? Well, I can endure over 100 miles an hour. No, no problem at all. As long as the earth is behind it, it would hold any kind of wind. The Seagate Association president complained the federal government hasn't been quick enough to build a new seawall to protect the shoreline. We need a seawall built out here in front of our bulkheads uh, to, to, to stop some of this, this terrible pounding that we get. Well, Governor Cuomo has declared a state of emergency here in New York State, and the next couple of hours will certainly be critical here in Seagate. Right now, we're braced behind the wall of a condemned building, but we're going to take a little bit of a walk on the wild side, and we'll have more later on. Reporting live from Seagate on the Brooklyn Shore, Mary Murphy, back to the studio. All right, Mary, thank you. Because of the treacherous conditions, bus service in all five boroughs is suspended tonight. The buses were sent back to their depots around 5 this afternoon. Transit officials hope to have service restored by morning, but they are making no promises. By mid-evening, most drivers had discovered for themselves that the streets were no place for cars. Roads usually crowded on a Saturday evening were nearly deserted tonight. Mayor Dinkins had high praise today for the cooperation of New York's people and for the expertise of its emergency workers. Well, these folks are only good and better. There's, there's no low. All high. They've been magnificent. The mayor's advice today was to stay home, but he didn't follow it himself. He was in Brooklyn as well as Manhattan to check out the storm's effects. Ernie? All right, the uh, threat of flooding is the key problem out on Staten Island. J.J. Gonzalez is live for us in Midland Beach, and I'll bet the people out there have their fingers crossed tonight, J.J. Yeah, we're at the PS41 on Locust Street in Staten Island. Here's where the Red Cross has set up a shelter for the people. There, 12 people have arrived already, and they expect more to come tonight. The majority of people here come, were, uh, at the shelter come from the Oakwood Beach section of Staten Island. There on December 11th, the, st uh, the storm left a gaping hole in the seawall there. And while we were there, we found a, uh, a huge uh, lake, small lake, a huge pond about 300 feet across of uh, water under ice. Uh, some people were trying to hang into their homes, but uh, basically they're very much afraid that the seawall at, at, 12, at 12 midnight, when the uh, tide rises to its height, that they'll be underwater again at least six feet. In Staten Island, this is J.J. Gonzalez. Back to you guys. All Thank right. you, J.J. We want to update you now on what's up and running in our area. The Long Island Railroad has restored service in and out of Penn Station with connections to Jamaica Station. Trains are leaving Jamaica Station about every three hours. Port Washington trains are leaving from Penn Station about every hour. But service on the Long Beach, Far Rockaway, Hempstead and West Hempstead branches is still suspended. Pass service is also restored, but PA officials say expect some breaks in service because of frozen signals. And for drivers, bridges in New York City have been reopened to commercial traffic, but the speed limit remains about 20 miles an hour. There is also scattered flooding reported on the BQE and the Belt Parkway. The LIE has also reported some flooding near exits 50 and 51. Now, the Staten Island Ferry is running one more boat at midnight when officials will decide whether or not to suspend service there. And as we reported earlier, all bus service in the five boroughs has been suspended. Shell? We have much more to tell you about tonight, including late word on what's happening at the airports. We'll be right back. Channel 2 News is sponsored by your tri-state Cadillac dealers.